you are watching my small hobby YouTube channel, the build video for BF109. Here we go, everybody let's start the show. So every now and then there is a time where you just want to build something nice and easy. You know, no sanding and no putting, well not extensive sanding and putting anyway. So I opted to go for this Airfix 170 second scale BF109. The part count is relatively low and the whole building and painting it took approximately a week. So here I am just building a cockpit which is very straightforward and simple and now I'm going to be proceeding in painting it in this dark grey. Again time lapse is going to be our friend just like with all other videos because I want to make this video short and sweet. You're welcome. If you're new to this channel and you like the content that you see, I dare you to press that bell button and click subscribe. In this video I will be using mainly Tamiya and real colors from AK Interactive. It's my first time using them and I'm really happy that I did because they're awesome. After the base coat is laid down with airbrush, I'm just using a very fine brush and acrylic colors from AK Interactive to pick out some details such as this harness strap and the joy of stick and of course the pedals which are very small and really not needed to be detailed because you can hardly see them once the cockpit is assembled. But because painting is fun, I did it anyway. And here I'm doing the dry brush technique. A dry brush technique is a technique where you dip the brush into paint then wipe off all the excess paint until it's almost dry, hence the dry brush. And then just go slightly over the surfaces to enhance their detail. That way you slowly build up the layers and exaggerate the surface detail. If you do it too quickly in one shot, it's not gonna work. So just be patient and everything will be well. Everything will be well. Everything will be well. Yeah. Anyway. I use the same technique on the inner surfaces of the cockpit area to make a more worn effect. And by this point I only needed to do one more thing and that was to apply the decals that have the cockpit instrument panels. As you see I just cut them out and now I'm placing them into their respectable places. This process is pretty straightforward and simple, all you just need to do is be very careful, put some decal solution on it and wipe the excess off. The last thing to put in the cockpit is this, I would call it heads up display, uh, which incorporates the crosshairs for the pilots to fire at the nasty allies. <laughs> and I'm just painting the edges with X18. And that is the cockpit done. Hooray! Now it's only time to put the two halves of the fuselage together and glue them in place. The seam line between the two fuselage halves is not that bad, but some sanding and putting will be required later on. Here I'm gluing in place the canopy, which is already masked, because why not? And I'm placing the centerpiece in its open position, but I'm using this as just a guideline to fix the back portion. I just dab a little glue on each end and the glue just flows into the crevices and sticks it. After it's dry, I just remove the centerpiece and I'm done. Next, I turn my attention to the tail of the aircraft. I put some glue on the crevice and attach the rudder. Like I mentioned earlier, some sanding and putting will be required on the seam line, so I'm just doing my best to sand the area and make it nice and flat. Whilst I was sanding, I was thinking about the design flaw of this aircraft, which is the propeller shaft and propeller assembly. For that reason, I made this little plug from styrene to better explain what I'm on about let's just take a look at this very professional graphics that I've made myself so here is what I wanted to achieve this is the half section of the front of the plane this is the prop shaft that goes into the hole then we have a cover plate and then we attach the propeller on the propeller shaft but annoyingly every time we try to attach the propeller on the propeller shaft this is what happens this is especially annoying because when you close off the fuselage halves there is no way to get the pin back into the hole. So to counteract this, I made a small covering plate and glued it in place so that wouldn't happen. Capiche? Comprende? Do you understand? Okay, before we tackle that little project and uh, attach the propeller, I need to do something else and that is the assembly of the wing. 
And I was very well surprised how well this actually goes together. No gaps, very good tolerances, you just put a dab of glue and you're done. Now ain't she just pretty? And here is the propeller shaft, I'm just putting it through the hole, pushing it inside, and then attaching the homemade covering plate. Job done! Now we must turn our attention to the front of the aircraft, where I need to paint the inner surfaces of this air intake, because otherwise when it's all assembled and put on the aircraft itself, it's gonna be very difficult to do that. Here I'm just painting with metallic gray color the radiator portion, and now I have to merge the two halves together and glue them in place using Tamiya fine cement. The assembly portion of this is a little bit of a faff, but nothing too complex for us scale modelers. There we go, easy freaking peasy. Now to attach this to the body of the aircraft slots in place, a dab of glue, done, done, I said done, no, stop it, stop gluing it, it's done, oh, darn it, I guess you're wondering what this piece of monstrosity is, go on, take a guess, it's something that farts smoke, yep, it's the exhaust, this is the worst exhaust that I've ever seen on any scale model so far, and I've seen a lot of crap. Not only that it looks bad, it oh, it just doesn't fit very well. And you have two of them, for e one for each side, both equally bad. I don't know what Airfix was thinking when they were making this. Uh, anyway, there was just a lot of sanding and cutting and gluing. And after a while, when you just almost give up, it kind of starts looking as an exhaust and something presentable. So yeah, it works. Now we are attaching the side air intake. Pretty. Wait, focus. Ah, pretty. And on this shot, you can also admire my professional masking abilities so that the cockpit is gonna be safe from paint. Now to tackle the seam lines. I mask the two halves of the fuselage separately, one on each side, and I would do this to the entire length of the aircraft, up and bottom, and afterwards I will squirt a little bit of uh, Tamiya putty in between, then wait about 3 minutes and remove the masking tape, thus revealing the puttied portion of the seam line. Then I let it dry for about 4 hours and uh, proceeded to sand the seam lines to its perfectional smoothness as you will see in the following video footage. One thing to note here is that you have to take your time with this. If you go too fast and take a too coarse sanding stick, you will do more harm than good. Also take note that you will have to rescribe the lines because the sanding just takes them out, as shown here. The easiest way to rescribe the line is to put masking tape right on the edge where the line should be and then use a little fine saw to cut into the plastic. Be very careful and graduate with this process, you don't want to cut into the fuselage, just make sure that you're deep enough to make a groove. You repeat this step for all the panel lines, wherever possible, and uh, after that if you have some dental tools, um, use those to kind of finish out the surface detail like you see me doing here. When you are rescribing panel lines, inevitably there is going to be a buildup of material inside the newly created grooves. Also some edges might be a little bit too sharp. So what you can do this is you can lightly sand the surface and then use a little bit of cement to smooth out the surface and melt the dust that's accumulated inside. And if all goes to plan, you should be ending with a model looking something like this. Not too shabby. Using my professional video making skills, I will show you the attachment of the horizontal stabilizers. Yeah. Out of focus and in frame. Perfect every time. Anyway, now I have to attach these uh, support struts and these are very delicate. I managed to break one in half whilst holding them in my tweezers. Yeah, and this one was the one that broke, so I fixed it together and put it in place. Again, professional video making.
in focus in frame perfect. I chose to build this model for two reasons, one of which you are seeing right now. The flaps can be represented in their up or down position, which I think is really cool. And also the canopy can be uh, displayed in a closed or open position. And the landing gear can be up or down. So if you have one of those display stands, you can just plop it there and it will be just fine. Because there are certain parts of the propeller that are in aluminium color and I only have this, I painted the whole propeller in aluminium and then went over it with the proper colors, just masking off the aluminium bits. This is the nose section of the propeller, which I mixed the paint myself. I didn't have um, German RLM yellow, so I just mixed yellow and clear orange from Tamiya and just kind of made my own paint which was fun. And here I'm painting the two uh, propeller pieces. Now we come to the good part. We are using AK Interactive's real colors and painting the propeller in its proper colors. And uh, it goes on really smoothly, very fine, and it covers very well. See, fantastic, fantastic. Before I proceed painting the aircraft, I'm uh, painting the canopy portion of the aircraft with dark gray just like the cockpit so when you actually uh, take the masking pieces off and you look inside the cockpit it's not going to be light gray uh, of primer you know this is like a sandwich paint that you do um, before putting primer on and I'm also painting the uh, engine part with this color as well and I'm going to be painting the engine with this XF1 flat black, which is you know, black. Then I just give it a quick coat of primer and use the RLM 65 AK Interactive real colors to paint the whole model in this blue. Just like any other paint, these paints also have to be thinned down to get a maximum good result whilst using them in your airbrush. To thin down the paint, I was using their thinner the RC702 and diluted it just like any other paint to make a milky smooth consistency. Oh yeah! Now we're coming to the most exciting part of this thing and it's camouflage. This aircraft has really interesting sharp camouflage patterns which I just love and it was apart from the modifications one of the reasons too why I chose to build it. Again, I didn't show the masking portion of the video because that is just boring and uh, it takes a long time to do a proper masking job. Just make sure you really do a proper masking job because if you skip out on this, you're gonna have a bad day when it comes to uh, camouflage. When you take the masking tape off, you're supposed to have a very smooth and sharp transition between the two colors. Uh, no spillage or you know unnecessary splatter of anywhere. Sometimes I forget this and I just kind of rush through this process but if you really do a good job then um, the results are fantastic. Of course, this plane's camouflage pattern is enhanced by the yellow tips on the wings and the yellow nose that covers the propeller. Just make sure you do a proper job, don't rush the masking portion and just, you know, just take your time and it'll be just fine. I have every confidence in you. all this masking means that you have to take it off again when it's painted but the end result is just fantastic masking you say again you do of course 
Uh, this plane has a little bit of a mottling effect on the side, so I had to mask off the areas that I do not wish to be sprayed, of course, as one does, and then proceeded to do uh, makeshift mottling, which went well. Yeah, totally. And I certainly didn't build two identical planes. No, no, this is one plane. I would never do that. I mean, come on, who does that? I mean, you have to be crazy to build two identical planes just to make yourself look good on a video. I mean, how pathetic is that? We will not comment that at all. Robert, you say? I paint, I do. Yeah, some of the things I do by hand, like this little back wheel. Um, it's no point in painting it with an airbrush. You know, an old-fashioned brush will do. For the main landing gear, the story was the same. I airbrushed the wheels and painted the tires. And now there are only two things to do. One is to apply the decals and second to do a light weathering. Before applying decals, I sprayed the whole aircraft with clear varnish from Tamiya X22. Then I proceeded to apply the decals with the help of Microset and Microsol, which I so didn't spill like... <sighs> twice. Decals are also one of the things that take time on any scale model build, especially one in 170 second scale because they are so small in certain cases. So just take your time, be methodical and uh, don't rush it and you'll be just fine. You know, sometimes poking the decals does work. Honest to God. But... Um, when it doesn't, you need to use your tweezers. There you go. Oh, isn't it lovely? For its size, this model kit has a pretty substantial decal sheet. And of course, I don't show all of the decals that are supposed to be applied in this because it will take another 20 minutes just to do that. So I'm skipping ahead and you know, I'm showing you the good stuff, the things that are actually visible and relevant. Here is one of those things which kind of gets on your nerve. These kind of decals are very difficult to get right and you'll see in a moment. Sometimes things go wrong, just like now. Oh dear, yeah. Um, that was a bit of a nightmare, but, you know, with some persuasion and patience, I did manage to uh, <clears throat> make it work. Yay. Here's an interesting one, a decal that goes on a decal. That was um, a little bit fiddly too, because you see I have a little drop of decal solution that is floating the decal around, and as soon as I attach the cotton bud on one end, it sucks the moisture away and it, the decal moves, so it's... A very fiddly process, making sure that the decal is placed centrally on the little circle there. Decals are very nice and here we see some decor on the engine cover. And the very last thing is the weathering, which is done by the poor man's version, which is this pastels. And I'm using also uh, these pigments, which I have, um, I got them for Christmas from Ravel. They come in this little package, as you see here. I mixed them all up in this little water with a brush and added some soap so that there won't be any surface water tension. Then I just mix everything up and start to apply it liberally across the wing surfaces and all around the model. Before doing this step though, make sure that you spray the model with a clear gloss coat, otherwise it's not going to work. Once the soapy pigments are dry, just use a clean kitchen paper towel, maybe moistening it up a little bit and just wiping off the excess. In this way you're removing the paint from the surface and leaving it in the panel lines. And so we come to the end of this video. Thank you so very much for watching if you have been. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing. And I'll see you again soon in another one. 
for now, enjoy the finished product. Bye bye. Auf Wiedersehen.